All right, welcome back to the Tool World Podcast. I'm here with Master Jew. And Hello, your host, there, David Jew. Mr. Jew, Hello. our host, our interviewer. Kind of. Anyways, Instigator. This, yeah. Instigator. Yeah. <laughs> All right, this week we're going to talk a little bit about um, twisting kick. So I was watching some students do twisting kick and kind of brought up some questions. Okay. You know, they're doing Quebec and they're doing that low twisting kick, right? And there's. I guess there's actually quite a bit to talk about, but I noticed that they were doing the kick where the leg was extended. Fully extended. Fully extended for a twisting kick. And I was like, hmm, that looks kind of weird. So we'll go through all the different heights, but hmm. Hmm. is the twisting hmm. kick bent or is it extended when you do it low? We'll start there. Okay, well, I think you got to look at what are the, the targets of the twisting kicks. Okay, low, that's middle, a good one, high. yeah. And so... The low twisting kick, obviously low is supposed to be about belt level, maybe shooting towards the inner thigh. And so you're actually fairly close. It's kind of like also in front as it's, well because you're That's right. You're not like at an it. angle so yeah. much. So it's kind of in front of you. You're standing in a um, fighting position, guarding position. Right. And so it's relatively close. So I would say that uh, the knee is slightly bent, but also remember that the toes should be lower than the heel. One of the things I notice with a lot of people that do twisting kicks is that the toe is kind of pointed upward. Mm -hmm. And in order to kick with the ball of the foot, the foot has to rotate. The foot has to rotate down. It's got to be lower than the heel so the ball of the foot hits a target. Okay. Right? Um, I do, I've seen in competition where people do twisting kick and they hold it out there and it's fully extended. Mm -hmm. You have to have flexibility to do that as well. Yeah. And body control. And of course, you, you want, just like any other kick, you want your body to be upright and actually kind of leaning in towards the kick itself. You want to go into it rather than leaning away from back. It. Okay. Right. And so, obviously, the one that kicks get higher, like side piercing kick. If you watch some of these side piercing kick, and like straight up, you can't keep your body upright. Right. It actually has to kind of turn down. Mm -hmm. And in some ways, that also makes the energy or kind of go in the opposite direction as well. Mm -hmm. That's why you kind of want to keep that body upright. Yeah. But so, yeah, low twisting kick. Okay. Slightly bent. So low twisting kick, slightly bent. It's kind of in front. What about middle twisting kick? Because now where's the target and then can we fully extend that leg? Well, I think you can extend those legs. I think you have to have a lot of flexibility. Yeah. That kick is a little bit, obviously, it's, I think it's going to be a little bit further away from your opponent. Mm-hmm kicking towards the midsection of the body or the solar plex. Mm -hmm. And that kick would have to be more like at a 45 degree angle. Mm -hmm. Kind of like a turning kick, yeah. right? A turning kick. When you, we think of turning kicks, it's not really directly in front. It's, that's more like a side turning kick. Mm -hmm. And turning kick is really more like at a, like an AD direction. Mm -hmm. Twisting kick's more like an AD direction. If I wanted to go to D, because the foot is kind of coming out, let's say if I was kicking my right leg, it's going away from your body, because mm -hmm. that's what it is. It's not going straight forward, but it, it's going at an angle mm -hmm. away from your body. And so I would say that's like more to like a 45 degree angle. 45, okay. 45. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I think you can do it locked out. Locked out, straight, okay. Straight out, what's your thoughts? Well, I think when it snaps, so it'll snap and extends and then kind of retracts, maybe that, depending on the flexibility. Yeah, and that's exactly the same as the front snap kick. Right. Right? I mean, it's, when you kick, is it fully extended? Yeah, it snaps out and it comes right back. The twisting right. kick's kind of the same way. It comes out and it comes, comes back. Right. In. Well, all kicks are supposed to go out and come back. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah, yeah. So. That's true. <laughs> well, well the some, majority. Of, some, uh, some hit when it's fully extended and some don't, right? And I think we're going to touch upon that in another podcast. But let's go to the high twisting kick. Where are we positioning? So that's uh, a person that might be like to the side of you. You can only go so far behind you. Your yeah, foot. yeah, yeah. And so that's, it's high as eye level, probably more towards your side. Mm -hmm. And so that again would be fully extended. Okay. All right. All right. So now kind of comes down to the question of do you hold it out or not? And so we've heard in the past of like maybe more like competition or patterns kind of sense that we hold out the low twisting kick. Um, you, right. So and why, why would we do that though? So that's a good point. Um, what you just mentioned. 
And that is, when do we do that? Do we do it in the pattern? Do we do it in competition? But in reality, what these techniques are is self-defense. Yeah. Right? And you don't ever want to hold out a kick like that. Yeah. Regardless. So it's got to be out and back in. Yeah. That's the mm -hmm. way it should be performed. Some people have, in competition, have demonstrated where they go kick and they kind of hold it out there. And it's pretty impressive. It's like the side piercing kick. Mm -hmm. You kick and you hold it and it looks, it looks kind of impressive in that way. Mm -hmm. In my opinion, I don't think that we should hold all kicks like yeah. that. Front snap kick. Yes, you could kick, hold it, pause it for one or two seconds and then retract it. I think for me, when I'm looking at a competition, that it goes out and fast and you see that speed, mm -hmm. right? Okay. And so for like front snap kick, for me, mm -hmm. it should be out and back. Twisting kick, same, because a twisting kick to me is kind of like a front snap kick. Mm -hmm. It would go out and back in. Okay. So you're not going to be holding a high twisting kick. No, that'd be really hard. <laughs> Never yeah. go back. So could you do it low? Uh, yeah, that's going to be, it's possible. That's, and I've seen that. Middle, yeah, it's an awkward position. You know, your body's kind of leaning a certain way. It's not as easy to balance. A lot of times you see people doing twisting kick on the ball of the foot to reach a little bit further. Right. And so when you're up on like that, it's not going to be easy to hold, right? Low, yeah. low. Yeah, you can do it. I don't particularly like it myself. Mm -hmm. And the pattern doesn't say hold the kick. Yeah. So if we look at the encyclopedia, should you hold or not hold? Should you not hold? I like the idea that the snapping techniques, you just out and then in. And then, right. and then the locked out technique, side kick, back kick, is probably, build, probably a little bit more holding. That's a tough kick, you know, twisting kick. Yeah. And... Um, you know, my first instructor, Grandmaster, the late Grandmaster Sabrisa Lay, he was very good at it. Right. I mean, I remember we sat next and he would just for fun, like bring his leg up and, you know. Yeah. He's like, thank you, sir. Yeah. <laughs> right, right. He could, he could just sit there and just bring it up. And, yeah. And then I'm like, oh man, I'm going to work on that flexibility. Not easy. Not yeah, easy. Not easy. Flexibility is not easy. No, no. Just but if you have flexibility, that's why it's important to have flexibility. If you don't have flexibility, you lose a lot of weapon. If you don't have um, that flexibility, I think you're pretty much stuck with front snap kick. I've seen some great people. And one of the most impressive break, I keep telling people this, is I saw this young lady, she was holding two boards in her hand, and she, right by her side, and she broke the two boards with her, dang. with a twisting kick. Dang, and yeah. I'm like, dang. That is impressive. Right. Well, so, do you think that women are better at twisting kick? Well, I, maybe the hip structure is actually a little bit different. Right, so. it is. It's more open. Yeah, though. yeah. So potentially, <clears throat> I don't know much about anatomy. And don't disregard twisting kicks. If you're good at it and mm -hmm. you have that ability, right. I was sparring, um, I, I don't remember, I was sparring someone, one of our students. He was pretty, he was very good at the twisting kick. He would roll a blade with his feet pointed outward. Right. And because uh, I asked him, how, oh, how, do you, how did you stretch out? He says, well, we've been practicing rollerblading this week. Yeah. Like, oh, that's cool. Right, right. But I remember sparring, me, sparring him and he would do it. He did a twisting kick. I was right in front and he did a twisting kick on my, hit me in the chest. I mm -hmm. didn't, didn't even see it. Yeah. I was like, dang, dang, that's, that's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> you don't see that too much in sparring though. No, yeah. you don't. But um, I think if you have that ability, yeah, and you incorporate it, if you can incorporate it into your sparring skill, yeah. I mean, we were just sparring, and he, right. he did that. Right, right. So it's not that you can't do it. Yeah, no, it's true. Let us know you guys' thoughts on twisting kick. As always, don't forget to be safe. Keep training. I'll see you guys next time. Take one.